Yes, yes, yes. We are live with another episode of Fire Builders Live. Welcome, everybody. Uh, today, I have an amazing guest, Jen Gottlieb. Welcome to Fire Builders Live. Oh my gosh, Josh, I am so excited. I've been a big fan of Fire Builders. And I actually, you guys, I reached out to Josh and I was like, please let me be on your Fire Builders show because I just want to have a conversation with you live. So Which I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored because I know you have a plethora of people that you can reach out to. And uh, I just feel incredibly honored that you wanted to be on Fire Builders Live and, and have a little chat. Now, if you're not familiar with how Fire Builders Live works, Basically, the premise is that we bring on amazing experts, we take big concepts, and we break them down into simple things you can do every day to improve. Today, we're going to be talking about the media. We're going to be talking about how to get media and actually and do it in 20 days or less, which is incredible. I personally cannot think of anybody better to be talking about this subject than Jen. So, Jen, let me make sure that I get this right because I don't want to, I want to do you justice here like 14 years, VH1 co-host. 14 uh, seasons. 14 if seasons. If it was 14 years, I'd be pretty old. So <laughs> we'll keep it to 14 seasons. We'll keep it down. 14 seasons <laughs> for uh, a, a national tour on Broadway, which by the way, uh, I looked up as I was researching you for this show and you've got, you've got some pipes. Let me tell you Thank some you. of the things. That was amazing. Uh, so, so a national Broadway tour, essentially you co-founded Super Connector Media and are now the hosts of uh, Unfair Advantage Live, which is this ginormous, amazing publicity event that connects entrepreneurs to the media. Um, so honestly, if there's anybody that I can see wanting to talk about this subject and how to get media, it is you. And again, welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, Josh, thank you. I think that everybody should have Josh announce them or read their bio because it is just it's a good mindset shift it's like oh it, that's such a blessing to have a friend or somebody that you look up to read your bio and thank you for that yeah absolutely well i mean thank you for being here and uh and you know like honestly i uh i i'm just i'm just super fascinated with what you guys are doing um i just think that it's something that I've always thought of. I've always had in the back of my mind. I've always kind of shied away from the media because it was, you know, it was intimidating and I didn't know how I was going to handle it and things like that. Uh, but then I feel like once you're ready and once you, once you get it and you're like, okay, it's time. Well, then, then, then you're like, shit, like how the hell do I make this happen now? I'm finally ready to do it, but I have no idea now what to do next. And that's why I'm so glad of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so let's talk about, let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, first of all, where are you in the world and how'd you sort of get into this whole thing? Well, right now I'm in New York city. So I am in the Mecca of the coronavirus right now. It's a little weird. Uh, it's definitely a wild place to be, but we're making it work. And how did I get into this whole thing? Well, I mean, you said a lot of it. So I, you know, my background is in entertainment. And I moved to New York City to become an actress. I did the Broadway National Tour of The Wedding Singer. So if anybody wants to look up what you saw, if you go on YouTube and you look up The Wedding Singer, Jen Gottlieb, you will see it. Uh, and then after that, I did 14 seasons on this heavy metal rock and roll talk show called That Metal Show, which, um, I mean, that was one of those moments where at the time I had no idea why the hell it was happening to me because I didn't like heavy metal music. And I was suddenly like the metal girl uh, for a really long time. And I was like, this is really weird, why? And now, you know, you can't connect the dots looking forwards. You can only connect them looking backwards. Now it all completely makes sense. And, you know, me being on VH1 and having that TV experience and meeting all of those rock stars and celebrities and, and actually hearing their limiting beliefs and their imposter syndrome and that they're all human beings too. And dealing with the media within that aspect, it, it helps me so much now today. So, I mean, that's one thing we talk about with the media is when you start to get yourself out there, your mess is actually your message and your past and the things that you did before in your life, even if you think that they don't have anything to do with what you're doing now, I promise you they do, <laughs> and you can find a way to tie it in, and that's what makes you special, and that's what makes, you, makes people want to listen, makes the media want to lean in and listen to you because of those cool stories like that. So Chris and I became partners. Uh, Chris is my life partner and um, now business partner, and we he was doing Unfair Advantage by himself, 
the event and it was a smaller event and came together and we were like, you know what, let's, let's create an, uh, uh, an agency and let's help entrepreneurs get into the media and let's, let's disrupt it and let's make it different and let's make it fun and let's, uh, have a mindset component to it. Because as you just said, you were like, oh my God, like, well, it's, I never wanted to do media because I never felt ready or like, I felt like it was a big thing. It, it's scary scary to talk about yourself in the media and put yourself out there and say, you know what, I'm worthy of being an expert and being known as an expert because all these things start to come into our head like imposter syndrome and perfectionism or this feeling of not being ready yet, which I was going to tell you when you said like, when I'm ready, ready's a lie. Ready's bullshit. Ready, being ready is fear talking, right? We're always ready. We are always ready. The time it, I just got off of a call with someone who they just had this thing happen to them and it ended up going viral. So now the me is actually reaching out to them and he's like, I just got to be ready. I didn't think I was ready, but I'm ready now because it's happening to me. So, um, yeah, we have a mindset component to our, to our event and our community and, and we really help people bust through those fears and that imposter syndrome and, and serve, serve the world and fulfill their responsibility of talking about what they do so they can help people totally and you know that's why i think you and uh, chris are such a great team because because you do have both the connection and the, the communication the personalization experience You've got all of that both you and chris but then also such a huge part of it is how you think about yourself um because i that i feel like that just that comes through in every and everything that you do, either on camera or off, I mean, if you get the media, but you don't have like a really solid sense of who you are and what you're doing, um, you know, it's going to show through and uh, and probably not in the best way. So there's like, so I feel like they're almost inseparable ideas, which is why I think what you guys are doing is so incredible. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. It all goes together. We always say we're a personal development company that uses media as the gateway. Yeah. So. It really is actually, we, we find that our clients and the people in our community, when they start getting media for the first time and they start stepping into that version of themselves that's unapologetic about being an expert and knowing you know, that, that they're helping people and the louder that they scream from the rooftops about what they're doing, the more people they can help. And once they step into that and they start seeing it happen in action and they start proving to themselves that, oh my God, it wasn't that scary, I did it. It like the floodgates open. And everything changes. Everything changes. There's massive transformation that can be had. So, you know, we're, we're really grateful that we get to do what we do. I love it. I, uh, I, and I'm grateful that you get to do what you do, too, because uh, I'm learning a lot from you just about every day. I see you guys on Facebook. So, uh, so now with regards to so for everybody that's listening, I mean, maybe maybe you have an idea about how you get into the media. Maybe um, maybe you have no idea. But today, Jen. As far as suggesting what people do, you know, if you had to start all over again and you could focus on really one thing that you could get started and kind of kickstart um, your media, what would that be? And uh, let's, yeah, let's talk about that for a little bit. Yeah. So the true unfair advantage when it comes to getting media, the only thing that really matters is your connections in your network and your relationships. And everybody already has that. That's the good news. So we all already have a network, whether you think you do or not, you have a network, you have relationships, you have people in your life that I guarantee you will be able to connect you to somebody in the media. So we have this amazing tool called the top 20 and I want to teach it to everybody that's watching because not only can it help you get into the media, it can also help with pretty much anything that you want, like sales, getting a boyfriend or a girlfriend, um, getting customers, getting investors for your company, like anything that you want. If you use this tool, you can actually tap into your own network and get what you want. It's just, a, it can get a little scary. So we'll talk about that when we get into it and some tips and tools that you can use to like push past that fear and get a little bit more comfortable asking people for help. Perfect. But um, I, I'm, I want to dive in and I'm going to teach this tool because it is like yeah. a secret and I've used it. Uh, so many people in our community have used it and said, oh my God, Jen, it worked. But the thing is, is you have to actually do it the way that I'm teaching to do it. Like you have to hold yourself accountable and stick with the commitment that you make to yourself that you're actually going to follow through. So if I teach this to you right now, Josh, are you going to follow through and do it? I'm going to follow through and do it. All right. And, everybody's and listening. Everybody listening. Yeah. You can hold me accountable. All right. 
Okay, so it's the top 20. Yeah. All right, so I actually made a little drawing for you so that everybody else can follow along. I made a prop. I was really prepared for this interview. It's our first prop. This is our first prop. This is a big deal. It's, it's super fancy. <laughs> it's super, super fancy. All right, so this is called the top 20. Now, what we don't realize is that every single thing that we need is already in our current networks. So what you're going to do is you're going to make four columns on a piece of paper like this. One, two, three, four. Okay. And if you can't read it, I'm going to explain. The first column, you're going to do a dump list of 20 people that you know that could possibly connect you to somebody in the media or get you directly into the media. Now, a few things are going to happen when you think about writing this list. You're going to say, oh my God, Jen, I don't know 20 people. I promise you, you know 20 people. Open up your Facebook, open up your contacts in your phone, and look, but don't just think about people in the entertainment industry. Don't think about people in your business. Think about people in your life. This could be your kids, parents, friends, your cousin, your mom, your dad, your next door neighbor is the sister of an anchor for a television show. You know, like it, you, you got to go deep and you really got to get creative and you really got to think. Okay. So 20 people. And then the second thing that's going to happen to your brain when you start to make this list is you're gonna say, I can't write that name down because I could never reach out to them. You'd feel really like, oh, I, yeah, I know that person, but I could never reach out to them. That's exactly Shut what it was. Down. Yeah, that was going through my head as you said that. Yeah, exactly. Don't listen to that voice, just write the name down and we'll worry about reaching out to them later. So the first step is write the name down even if you, you do not wanna reach out to them, it's okay. So don't even think about reaching out to them yet. So you've got your list of 20 people here. Now in the next column, it says influence. So you're going to rate each person on a scale of one to 10 on how influential they are. Now, not how influential they are, like how many Instagram followers they have, but how influential they are in getting you what you want. So let's say you're friends with the editor in chief at Forbes. Well, I'd say he's pretty influential in getting you what you want, right? He's like a nine or a 10. In fact, he's a 10, right? Because he has all the influence. Yeah. Um, but let's say you're friends with like, you know, somebody that works in the mailroom, I don't even know if there's mailrooms anymore, but works in the mailroom at, you know, Cosmopolitan Magazine or something like that. You know, they, they have connections, but they're not that influential, so they'd be like a four or five. Um, and then the next column, you're gonna rate that same person on a scale of one to 10 on how likely they are to help you. So at the top, it says help. So if it's your mom and you talk to your mom every day and you guys have a great relationship, and she knows somebody that's in the media and she could easily, you know, that's a 10. But if it's somebody that you were at a networking event and you just kind of met for a second and you really haven't done anything to help them, you don't have a great relationship, that's like a two or a three, right? So you add up those scores, their level of influence, their level of how likely they are to help you. And you're gonna have a total number here in your last column. Okay. okay? So you're going to have total numbers for each person. Now, the key is you're going to take those people and you're going to list them again in descending order it, with their scores. So that means that the highest scores are at the top and the lowest scores are at the bottom. So that means the easiest people to contact, the people with the highest scores on your list are going to be at the top of the list. Okay. So here's the challenge. You're going to contact one person a day for 20 days. Now, this is the key. The people at the top of the list, they've got high scores. So they're super likely to help you, right? They're, they're your mom, they're your family members, they're someone that you've done a lot for in your life and you've helped them, so they wanna help you. So you can go right out and ask. You can say, hey, like I've got this amazing pitch, could you connect me to this person? Or could I send this over your way? Or I really wanna be on your show. Or I really, you know, you know those people, that's great. But the people lower on the list, you may have not spoken to them for years, or you may have just no, like met them, you know, casually at a party and said two words to them. So you can't go out and just ask them for help. That would be totally weird, right? We don't want you to do that. But you can start to garner a relationship with them. Now, what are some ways to build relationships with people that you know, but you know, you want to get onto a, a playing field where they would help you and you would help them? Well. The first thing that you can do is figure out how you can help that person. Now, don't reach out to that person and say, hey, how can I help you? Because that's giving that person homework and we hate that. I don't yeah. like it when people ask me how they can help me. Same, it's exactly. It's like, just just figure it out. Like, even if you propose something, but don't make me think about it. Just, just propose something, anything. 
A hundred percent. You get it because you're very good at this. So like, what does that person have going on in their life that you could, you could help them with? Like, do they have a book coming out, a podcast um, that you could review? Do they have a book out that you could write a review on Amazon? I love doing that for people. Could you share their content? Could you connect them with somebody that you think would be a great connection for them? Maybe you could be a super connector and just provide that for them. Like, hey, I was thinking about you and you should really know this person because they could maybe help you. Um, could you, you know, do they have a life event coming up or that just passed where they had a wedding or a baby or something like that and you could send a gift or, you know, anything just to go above and beyond, but think about it before asking them and do something to be able to to help them without them having to tell you what they need help with. Can I, can I stop you right there real quick? Please. Right. Because I think it's, I think whenever you say that to me, um, I go and play that in my head and I say to myself, all right, you know, let's say that I was going to ask this person uh, this one thing and propose something that I could help them with. Right. I think that maybe because I do this and probably some people listening might do this too. I'm worried about being shot down by that yep. idea. Right. But then I think, when's the last time somebody has offered to help me and I've shot them down and said, no, 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 you know what? I don't need your help. It's okay. Kind of thing. I don't think it's ever happened in history. Um, you know, unless what you're trying to do for them is so off the wall ridiculous, but hopefully it's not, you know, it's not like crazy. Um, I would say that, that people are very receptive. They're going to be much more receptive to, to help, even if it's not the exact thing that they need at that one time, it's still okay. Like it's about the thought and it's about the, you know, the intention behind it. And so I would say, if you're just like me and you're worried about being shot down, don't be, just do it. A hundred percent. Exactly. I'm trying to think like the only time that I would get annoyed of somebody or like shots, which I would never shoot somebody down ever, but like if it was a selfish thing. So if someone came at it, like I'll help you, but this is what I want in the same sentence. You know what I mean? Like, I'm happy to provide value in this way if you would share this for me or if you would, you know, help me with this. So my tip would be come from a complete place of selflessness and service. It's not about you. It is completely all about helping somebody else. Not only will that create an amazing law of reciprocity and they will, you know, build that relationship, but it'll also make you feel amazing because yeah. you feel amazing when you help other people. So if you want to get a nice shot of happiness, pick one person a day, like I said, like that top 20 list and help those people, help them and just do something nice for them wanting absolutely nothing in return. So check this out. Uh, so for everybody that's listening, and I had to just share this because because this is really resonating with folks, right? Um, and like you said, it doesn't, it, it always, it doesn't have to necessarily be just trying to get media. It could be for anything in your life. But in particular, I really do like what you said about, you know, just not having any kind of expectation for any help in return. Um, to, so it becomes from a genuine place. I love that. I think that's that's really important. Um, so so for you, when you just when this has worked for you in the past, uh, you've done a little bit of research. You've approached these people, and um, and I take it because just you've got great communication skills. You know they probably reacted favorably, and they were like, "Yeah, Jen, thanks for the help." And of course, and we'll start to develop a relationship. Um, those. Have you found that there's like a, a, I don't know, a certain type of way that you ask? I mean, how do you do it? If like, if we were to, if we were to, if I was that person and you were to ask me right now, what would you say? Well, I'll like, give you a perfect example of how the top 20 list has worked for me. So it'll give everybody an example of how I do it. Um, because this was really magical and amazing. And it, it actually takes it from the top 20 list all the way to ROI, which is great. Because like to getting media to making money. Yeah. Like that. Um, so I on my top on my media wish list, I really wanted to get into well and good, which is this is when I was a um, I was a health coach for a really long time, a mindset coach, and I wanted to be in well and good, and that was like I, I knew that that was a blog or a, you know a space where my audience was reading. So at one of the unfair advantage lives before Chris and I were partners, I briefly spoke to someone that worked at that wrote for well and good lovely woman. I spoke to her for about five minutes, right? So I did not know her that well. I only knew a few things about her, but I put her on my top 20 list because, hey, I knew her. She was just, you know, very influential, but not very likely to help me. So she was one of those people that I had to 
provide value for in order to build a relationship. Uh, if I wanted to ask or pitch her, because yes, I could just pitch her an article, but she's getting thousands of pitches a day. Like I want to actually create a relationship with her and have long a long game relationship. So I thought, all right, what are some ways that I could help this girl without, you know, without asking her? And the only things I knew about her was that she was a single girl living in New York City and she was writing a book. So I thought, okay, what did I want when I was a single girl living in New York City? I wanted friends. I wanted things to do. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a girl's brunch. And I know another woman that works for Hay House, which is a publishing company. And she's a single girl too. So I'll invite all my girlfriends to a brunch. I'll invite the woman from Well and Good. And one of the girls works at a publishing house. So maybe she can help her with her book. So I decided to just connect people and bring people together. And I invited the girl from Well and Good. And we had an amazing brunch. There was like five of us there. It was adorable and fun. And people may say like, Jen, that's a lot of work. But it was a lot of work, but it was not just to get the connection. We had an amazing time. I provided a lot of value for a lot of girls. We all like are now friends. And then I didn't say one word about wanting to be in well and good. But like a week later, she reaches out to me and she's like, Jen, I love the brunch. I had so much fun. Um, I'm writing this article and I'd love for you to be featured. So she just came out and asked me and I was like, amazing. So then I, my article in Will and Good came out. It was super fun and exciting. And then I got like three or four clients from that article that reached out. They were like, I saw your article in Will and Good. I'd love to work with you. I still, I don't even do that anymore. And I still get messages from that article, which is insane. <laughs> so, and keep connecting the dots because I went out of my way and did the long game thing, like put together a beautiful brunch and made friends with her. Now we have a real relationship and now I have a PR agency. So whenever I want my clients to get in to Well and Good, I have an amazing contact there forever because she's a friend. So it's, you know, and it's a win-win relationship all the time. So that's how the top 20 list works. I love that. Uh, you know, because it's true. Like people just, they want to do business and they want to communicate with people that they like, you know, that are friendly, that they, you know, that they can develop those relationships with. So that's, that's incredible. That's incredible. And it took like a certain amount of guts to just be, to say, look, I'm just going to try this and see if it works and, and bring them together. Who knows? It's uh, there might not be a direct ROI, but at least we're going to have a good time. At exactly. least we're going to have fun. And if anything, I'll just, I'll get some friends out of it. Maybe we'll do this, uh, you know, every night for a month, you know, or every month, something like that. I think that's very, very cool. And it worked, it worked very well. Uh, that works. So with regards then, so getting back to the, uh, the top 20 list, Right, you writing down in those columns uh, the the people, how sort of influential they are, how well you, they're kind of willing to help you, and then adding those up along the corner. And again, this is from one to ten, right? So yeah. one being absolutely none, ten being amazing, um, and then once you have all of those um, added up on the right hand side, put them in descending order. And then contact one person a day, which I think is an awesome tactic. Uh, do you have a Do you have a preference? Like, I guess it really depends on how well you know them. Do you, you email them? Do you try to uh, to get them on the phone? Um, do you uh, stalk them into a in a coffee shop uh, kind of thing? Like, what do you What do you well, do? Right now, we don't stalk them in a coffee shop. <laughs> that's not possible. Um, but sure. I I really think about. I think about the person. It's all about that person. And you know, what's so even like I do this with sales, like I never take somebody off of the communication that they that they prefer. So if I'm texting with someone, I'll always communicate with them via text. If I'm emailing with them, I always email. If I call, if one time we had a phone call and it was great, I'll always call. So whatever that person prefers, I would do that. And and you can tap into those people. So the people lower on the list, you're gonna have to recreate that relationship. So you're gonna have to figure it out. Um, so like maybe slide into their DMs and offer help or, you know, whatever you're doing or try their email, you may have to play, but the people top of the list, you know how that person likes to communicate, you know? So sometimes your brain will do this fucked up thing. And like, you secretly don't want them to respond because you don't want to have to ask. Right. So you'll be like, Oh, I'm going to text. Or you'll be like, I'm going to email them because you secretly know that they don't really check their email. You're like, I'm not going to text them because they will check that. And then I have to actually ask them for help. So you guys do the most uncomfortable thing. That's what it's about. And that's why I said, 
one person a day. You can do it. It's one person a day. And then the the mindset, the shift that I make when I ask for people, ask people for help or reach out to people is I think about how great I feel when somebody asks me for help. You know, when someone asks me for help, I feel amazing. I feel seen. I feel important. You know, if it's a really genuine ask, like I wanted your opinion or I wanted you to help me because I know that you can do this for me and nobody else can, that makes me feel good. So every time that you don't ask somebody for help, you are taking away that opportunity to make them feel great. That's a good way to put it. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. And, uh, and you know, it it's for me, for personal experience to the, uh, the idea of sort of not denying that person, the opportunity to feel like, you know, to, to feel amazing, to feel like they're, they're actually helping in some way, shape or form. Same thing. I mean, I spent a lot of time living with host families abroad. That's what I did very early on. Like I was an exchange student in South America, and, right? And uh, and you you definitely have some reservations with with asking for help, but then you start to the, like, for instance, when you go to somebody's house and they offer you a drink, most people say, "No, no, no, it's okay, right?" It's like I don't want to bother you, but actually, it's the exact opposite that I found. It's, you know, it's that opportunity to make them feel amazing that they're that they're making everybody feel comfortable, yeah. that you feel comfortable, right? And it took me a while to realize that. <laughs> it took me a while to realize that. I love that. that there's roosters in the background. It's my favorite uh, thing in the world talking to you. It's Elvis and all of his friends are uh, are getting, Haley says they're getting feisty today. Yes, they are very feisty today. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, it's, it's that, it's, it's not denying them that opportunity to feel amazing. So, uh, so I, I completely resonate. And, and I know, that um, we're kind of a little bit of a time crunch, and I want to talk to you. How do people? How do people know you a little bit more? How do they connect with you? Tell me what's going on in your life. Tell me uh, um, how people can find you online. So the first way is always Facebook because we're on Facebook right now. So that's easy for you if you're watching. Just go ahead and add me as friend. I'm very available. Uh, and then Instagram, it's at Jen with one N underscore Gottlieb. Um, very available on there too. Shoot me DM. And then the other cool thing that we have going on that Josh is actually a part of is our five day be on TV challenge, which is, it's the first time we're doing it. And we are so unbelievably excited about it. We're going to teach for five days, everything that you need to know to be able to target pitch and book your first TV segment. And we're all going to do it together. So it's a lot less scary. Uh, it's a five day challenge. It starts next week. You can sign up now. Um, we'll be able to sign up up until the 18th when it starts and it's super cheap. It's only 55 bucks. And uh, it's a, it's an unbelievable group so far of people. And uh, we'd love for you all to join. So if you're Josh, drop in the chat, the link for people to sign up for the challenge. And that's a, that's a cool way for everybody to be able to hang out with us and, and see how we work and learn a lot of great, stuff about entering the media and starting to get yourself on TV. Totally. I mean, one of the best things that I'm looking forward to with this challenge is, is doing it all together, right? Because yeah. if you do it just satellite on your own, where you're, where you're kind of in your own little world and you sort of reach out, but you're not sure if you're doing it the right way. And then you don't get any follow up, like you don't get any response back and you think, ah, oh, man, maybe it's my idea. Like there's just so many little mental roadblocks along the way. And that's, a lot of the reason that I love this challenge, what you guys are doing is because I want to get over those and then I kind of want to get it over with a lot of people doing it all at the same time. Accountability is key. That's yeah. what it's all about. That's, it's, you know, connection, accountability and doing it together. makes it a lot less scary and we're all in it together. So it's going to be super fun. Yes, it is. And Jen, this has been an awesome conversation. Thanks again for being here. This has been great. Um, you got any parting words before we go? Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I could talk to you seriously all day. Parting <laughs> words, well, first of all, I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful for you having me on your show. I'm grateful for everything that you bring to our community and for what you're doing for the world with Fire Builders. I think it's really spectacular. And everybody that's watching, I share this with everybody um, because <laughs> this, this needs to get out there in a big way. And um, my parting words is that you guys, like the only person that's stopping you is you. That's it. So if you have a message that you want to share and you have people that you can absolutely help, if you are not making yourself visible, 
to be able to help them, they're never gonna be able to find you and they're gonna pay somebody else. So take action, one little action step each day to get your message out so that you can help people. That's it. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, you heard it. You heard it first here on Fire Builders Live. Jen, thank you so much again for being here. Uh, to everybody watching, thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. And, uh, and we're out of here. Jen and I, we will catch you on another episode of Fire Builders Live. Adios. Have a great day. Bye.